engaging what's the teacher like what are the students like that sort of thing as an observer and therefore what are you learning as an uh, this is based on my experience during teaching at university uh, we had uh, as lecture we did planning we did teaching but we never did the reflecting this is teacher we never and we make uh, in the planning, we make 14 topic or 14 weeks to learn some topic. But in the middle, for example, this is what happened. In the middle, we had to teach uh, three topics in one week. But in at that time, we can reach uh, or we cannot finish the three topics. It's only one topic we can discuss in the class. What should we do? Should we revise all the topics? If we change the topic, it means that there will be two topics that we don't discuss in the class. They need this vocabulary as well. Better do something about that, if you see what I mean. So I try to plan the lesson so that it leads towards that activity. That's one thing. Second thing, speaking activities, you'll be familiar perhaps with the, the concept of information gap. Very, very, very crucial. Um, it's, it's less common in life to speak when you already know the answer. Sometimes it happens, but most of the time it doesn't. So in a classroom, if you can create a, an information gap where you have to sort of, where you don't know the other person's information, that's a very, very good principle. Um, and there are lots and lots of different ways that, that you can do that. And if you look up information gap, activities as a general principle because there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that's a good way to do it second way i would encourage methodologically or perhaps pedagog pedagogically group work i think um i am not a great I, I personally i don't like getting students to the front to demonstrate their english i don't that's not something i enjoy doing i, I, I feel it puts them on the spot if you're doing it as a test or a presentation yes but if it's simply an activity to show that they can speak English, to me, I find that's personally, this is my opinion, I just find that worrying and stressful and difficult and lots of people don't like doing it. So I think you need to think about the safety of the small groups. And if you can get kids, pupils working in small groups, if, with a good task, with an information gap activity which you've led up to, then it's safer and they can practice. You can't sit at the front You've got to be going around, checking, listening. You've got to be doing that. But I think that's part of it. It's methodology, it's pedagogy, it's planning, it's choosing the information gap activity. I am not going to say that's a guarantee of success. But all those sorts of concepts, I think, will help to promote speaking. Um, the other thing I would mention um, is not to be overambitious sometimes. Sometimes people will say, okay, get into group. And again, I did this when I was at Ikit Pegyari. It was a terrible lesson. And I had about 15 students. I said, right, get together and discuss, I don't know what it was, I can't remember, blah, blah, blah. Have the problems of the world environment or something stupid like that. And there was complete silence. It was a stupid topic. 
It's a massive group. They were all embarrassed. Nobody wanted to say anything, and it was a disaster. Well, my fault, right? So then I learned small groups lead into vocabulary and all the rest of it. So, so you learn and you reflect. There is an excellent book by Penny Ur, you are, called Discussions That Work, which is an excellent book, and that's about fluency activities. But if you look up information on the internet about controlled and freer practice, controlled practice, freer practice, that gives you the sequence between helping them with the language and giving them more freedom. And it's a mixture of the two. I've just given you a lot of information in a very short period of time, and I hope that gives you some ideas. Is that a little bit helpful? A little bit? <laughs> Thank you. Coming back to the gentleman before, that's a question of curriculum design. It's a question of um, how free your university is. Uh, and at universities, you've also got a lot of freedom. So you can actually choose to cut, chop and change if you have that freedom. <clears throat> that's one obvious answer. Then you need to go to the academic committees and the dean and all the rest of it. So if a topic goes, it goes. You know, so that's, that's one answer to it. But secondly, <coughs> Consider um, different modes of interaction. Now again, in a perfect world, the students would study a lot outside. In a perfect world. However, it doesn't always work, let's be honest. Now, um, but in a perfect world, if you, dis you could decide to do another type of topic, for example, with online material, which you could, do you know the blended learning? concept or the, or the flipped classroom, I heard a flipped classroom. A flipped classroom basically means they learn the stuff first and they come into the class to practice it. So for example, what's up, if you're teaching English and if you're teaching um, I don't know, the culture, cross-culture, right? Instead of in the classroom talking about cross-culture, for homework, they read something, they watch a video, and then they come into the classroom and discuss aspects of it. So if you look up flipping the classroom or flipped classroom, that's one way to deliver the information and get the discussion in the class. So they teach themselves and then they come in. But you've got to make sure that you're doing it when they come in, right? And if they haven't done it, off you go. One time when I was at Ica, I've done it, I've done it once and in Holland, I, I've done it, I'm a bit, what did they call me? I call Anchor, wasn't I? I was an Anchor student. Anchor or Because a couple of times I walked and I said, has anybody done their homework? And I said, well, if you haven't done your homework, I'm not going to teach. And I walked out. If you're not prepared to learn, I'm not going to, I've done that twice. Did it in Holland as well, I don't care. Right, so it's a bit, bit anchor from time to time. I'm not saying that's an answer for you. I'm not saying that. <laughs> go away, go away. It's a nice, easy teaching term. But um, that's one way to look at it. So you cut out what you're doing in the classroom, put some of the stuff, read this, watch that video, bring it back in and discuss what conclusions do you make. That's one way to do it. So it's, it's about curriculum design. It's about mode of delivery of the, of the instruction. And it's what you do in the classroom. And it's not an easy answer either. Okay. Okay, good morning everyone. Okay, it's nice to meet everyone in Indonesia, especially in Surabaya. Alright, and I'm from Malaysia anyway. Okay, fine. The first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Universitas Islam Negeri Sunan Ampal for actually inviting me to give this talk. And this talk is basically, I know so many of you will be interested. Many of you will be having your eyes open all the time because you're talking about technology, tools, and how to actually apply them. All right, so be positive throughout my session. I just have a few of my thinking that, oh, technology, you should be. It's just a note, pedagogy comes first before technology, all right? So it's just a, a, a note. Or the thing that I'm going to highlight is 21st century educator education. At least it's, it's a must for you to know what are the characteristics, what are the skills that 
uh, a teacher or educator and you need to know in 21st century education. It follows by e-learning trends and teach, in teaching and learning, definitely trends has changed over the time. All right, and um, how can we empower teachers through the use of technology and also how can we engage students through the use of technology? All right, there are use um, of technology. It's a useful thing, but it's just too facilitate. There's a lot of things, but teacher has to be smart to do that, okay? And there's a lot of work on the teacher's shoulders in order to do that, okay? Now, I'm going to start my presentation by Simon's uh, quote saying that people don't buy what you do, all right? They buy why you do it. And there's always a reason why I'm here, okay? This is a very short reflection for myself. Why am I here, okay? And perhaps you might be thinking, why are you guys here? What are you expecting from my presentation? Now, look, why am I here? Again, Henry mentioned yesterday, I'm going to quote her, right? Henry, you spoke about see, passion. If you don't like something, you'll be stressful, am I right? And you really love to do it, you will go all out to do it. It's because of you have the passion. You have the passion, you have the interest, you'll go all out. And my passion is being a teacher. The joy of teaching. That's me and my students. Valve is clean. Yes. <laughs> Alright? So, I love actually helping my students. Not only helping them to you know, impart <coughs> knowledge, but also in calculating skills and instilling values. Wow, those are big words. It's not easy in calculating skills, right? And instilling values. How am I going to do that? That's the role of the teacher. Now, so I'm going to welcome you to the new culture of learning. Why? Are we going to rely back on the old method? I'm not saying that old method is outdated. No. And old method is not the effective. No, I'm not saying that. Don't get me wrong. From the beginning, I'm telling you, it's not bad. Okay? Now, learning for me, this time around, it is for 24-7 already. Because why? You already have gadgets. To me, you have your gadgets right now itself. Some of you are already clicking. Alright? So you already have gadgets with you. Look, tablets, laptops, wherever you are. Alright? And they normally they say, knowledge is in the air. Why? You don't even have to carry pen drive. Just send it through your email or Dropbox. Have you done that before? Yeah. As long as there is Wi-Fi or internet connection yeah. or your mobile data. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's a big question mark. Everywhere comes is the problem of connection, internet connection, Wi-Fi. If you have that, good enough. Okay. Now the world is actually in the midst of constant change. Now everybody wants to change the world, but there are some people, some of them out there, they don't want to change themselves and the way they teach. Can you imagine what will happen if they don't change themselves? Or they change the way they teach? Can you imagine that student be no. Or the teachers, uh, sorry, students will be actually even nodding. They're going off to sleep. Okay? So, now if you don't like to change, you might not be relevant. They call it irrelevant here. Alright? Now, even in 21st century, John Landau is a producer of Titanic and Awata. He said, Educators in 21st century are at risk of becoming irrelevant. Why? People are full of tech savvy. Some people are already with technology and you're still using. So 21st educators, 21st century educators has to be moving forward. But yes, keep in mind always the pedagogy first. Technology is just facilitating. 
but we are advancing instead of we are having only PCs. Now we can actually move. It's already mobile. What do we have? Laptops, smartphones, tablets. We are already mobile. Ah, that is mobile. Mobile is not only the phone. Mobile means it's mobile. You can move everywhere. That's mobile. It's attracting to be part of learning revolution happening around us and with new learning paradigms and also the technologies. I'll be introducing to you some of the technologies might be useful in your teaching and learning later. You might try an error, but some of you might be a bit demotivated. Because I've been hearing since yesterday. Some of the tell rural places we don't have internet here. Yes, I know. There's barriers. And believe me, Malaysia was three years back, just like what now you have you are facing in Indonesia, rural school do not have internet access. Malaysia was facing the same thing three years ago. It's just a matter of time. Where actually they went into the rural schools, they have laboratories, computer labs already. And they have internet access and every school now, every school, even rural schools, they have the internet tower. Tower for accessible for you know, students to access the internet. But it takes time. It's not overnight. So I believe Indonesia will also progress. Alright? In that sense, it's just a matter of time. I'm introducing so that you have an idea. It's like, say, you already have the opportunity. You already have the connection very well. Then where are you going to go next? What are you going to do? You have to see how other countries are also developing. What are you... What are actually students need? <coughs> Education today is already globalized and connected uh, world. Now it's becoming small, smaller, smaller, smaller. Can you imagine that? It's going to be very small. If I do a WhatsApp call from here to UK, my friend will be able to answer and can see me. Very small. Looks like UK and Malaysia or UK and Indonesia is very close. It's next door. All right. Now, whether 21st century teachers, are we actually ready? Are we ready to teach them? That's a big question. Now, I'll share some of the things that happening in Malaysia after that in Indonesia. All right. Now, there are some updates. Now, classroom studies to go digital. Starting from next year in Malaysia, they are going to provide tablets. They're going to allow students to have tablets to school, but not mobile phones. They might chat and so on. So they don't allow mobile phones, but they allow tablets. I think there's a receipt for tablet for only students. They're going to have that. But for starting, teachers already have their phones. Because my sister is a secondary school teacher, so I know. They already started having phones, rural schools, all right? And she was saying that they're going to get tablets soon to work with the students. And students are also already started asking for work. Please give us homework. We want to know. We want to do it at home. To do it online. They already started asking for that. Reshaping teaching with technology. Teachers are already having workshops. To reshape them. Alright. To, to what per se. To um, upskill. Alright. To have the skills to be improved. How to use the technology and all. Now different styles of learning. Alright. When you have different class of learning, there's no one size that can fit all. So you have to really cater something that students can, from a different learning styles, can also learn. If I'm going to just open a book and start teaching, or just use a PowerPoint and start talking, what would happen? There's some of the like, hmm, up. The same thing again, word by word. Isn't it? I always place myself the students should that whenever I do presentation I want my staff to be there seated not to yawn alright but to actually be engaged and how to engage myself with the audience I always keep my this thing in my mind that look I need to keep my audience engaged that they are connected with what I'm saying alright Leaping with technology, this is our Deputy Minister, Education Minister, Dr. Kamala Nadan. Right? Now, in Indonesia, 
Alright, this is in Jakarta if not mistaken. I've taken from Jakarta, the Jakarta Post. Indonesia, Indonesian teachers learn tech tricks from Silicon Valley. Good idea. It's a good move, they are learning. So if you say, no, Indonesia is backward, no, no, no. 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 Please look, there are. Okay, some more. Mobile application connects teachers and students. Some places. These are from Indonesian newspapers, all right? So, yeah, even you see, not anyone can teach and learn in Google Classroom. They have brought something, it's like learning management system, where you can have, give assignments, homework, everything you can give online. That is Google Classroom. Has anyone tried Google Classroom before? Yes, all right? Now, so these are 10 hallmarks that you need to include in the 21st century. You might be going across all this. You have student ownership engagements, very important. If they don't engage with you, I'm afraid there might not be learning going on. You have to keep them engaged. Okay? Project-based learning, leadership, citizenship, personal responsibility, collaborative learning. You might have groups, but a different way. How is that possible? Uh, community or a mastery of uh, curriculum development of higher order thinking yes, that, that's the main issue as well that students are not thinking critically I don't know, is that the same issue here back in Indonesia that students are lack of, you know, they do lack of uh, critical thinking here they do so, community partnership technology in 21st century teachable moment and also learning should be fun and I did mention yesterday, I think one of the primary speakers did mention uh, that learning has to be fun. Alright, we'll go on. Now, can we deliver the lesson well? What happened? We have to take into consideration of all these ecosystems. These are elements and the ecosystem. We are not going to only focus on that teacher, students, pedagogy, curriculum, leadership, Quality, assessment, recognition, accountability, and so on. There are so many aspects you have to take into account when you plan something. Now, our students. I want them, are you guys prepared as a student? I know some of them are students, some of them are lecturers, some of them are teachers. Am I right? So, are we actually prepared for that? Students need seven survival skills nowadays. If you have these skills, you can survive. What is this? First one, critical thinking. I told you just now. How important is the critical thinking, right? Then collaboration. Agility and adaptability. How can you adapt to the changes? And comes initiative and also entrepreneurialism. Effective oral and written communication also assessing, analyzing, information, curiosity, imagination. So these are seven skills that you have to know. All right, it's easy to just read, but how to actually engage our students to do all this in the class? That's a big question as well. New literacies that they need to know, students need to know is about self-motivated, self-directed. I always remember self-directed. Henry, I always remember of you. Now, social networking, identity management, privacy maintenance, yes. If you have pay, Facebook, social network, you are getting activated with other websites online. How are you going to manage your privacy? Okay. Managing and creating content. I spoke to one of the colleagues just now. That information is in your hands. Some students, some people, they run after information. I said, you don't have to run after information or knowledge. Knowledge will come to you. Be smart. Curating content is the one. That means you select, you organize, you manage. You are sent to your email. Each and every time there's an update. So you don't have to go back. Oh, what is this? Huh? Oh, this one. So you are safe in your computer. No. So smart. All right. Can we, the educators, help the students? Do you think we can help? I know it's one big thing in the mind, it's only the 
internet here. <laughs> All right, but other than that, I'm sure that you guys can help. You have the motivation, you can do it. Now, educators at 21st century will be thinking, how do I make my course more exciting? All right, it could be interesting, engaging, fun, yet impacting. How to do that? You're going to look at active learning uh, activities that can be done. We have already changed the shape of paradigm eh, from uh, instructor, uh, instructor centered to student centered. We are no longer, you know, uh, looking forward for lecture. I'm not saying that lecture method is outdated. No. If you find there are one of the one of the techniques, you have heard of blended learning, you have heard of flipped learning. I'll explain in a while. If you see flipped learning, there is a session when you start the lesson with debriefing session. That's where you engage again, explain. Lecture method doesn't run away. But it's just a very short version of lecture method. They call it deep teaching session. So we will start thinking of something which is in higher level thinking, not only until knowledge, comprehension, not only that. We should go higher. So suggestion and looking back into the era, into, into the development, we should rethink of Rethink teaching and resign learning. Alright? We should think about our teaching and also redesign learning. So whether it's suitable or not suitable. Whether our students are going to learn this way or not going to learn this way. How are we going to tackle that? Okay? And if you're going to use the same tactic and it doesn't work, you're going to de get demotivated and also your students. So how are we going to change? You need help. Am I right? Now, look at this video. Where is it written that the old way is the right way? Where is it written that a traditional education is the only way to get an education? Where is it written that classes only take place in a classroom. What if you could get your degree to develop your talent, no matter who you are or where you are? What if there was a different kind of university? One that's changing the rules, that comes to you, that fits in your life, even adapts to how you learn. Where is it written that you can't change your life? That's just the thing. It isn't written anywhere. Whether you want to search or don't want to search, you search, there are hundreds of it. Am I right, Henry? You just Google type, there are hundreds of methods, but follow the level. What there's a need, go back to your learning outcome, objective. That to me is basically really important. And I like to remind again, pedagogy comes first, think of that. And then you think, how can I make things easier to use this technology to help my students? Thank is that causing thing? All right, thank you. Yeah, so. just said about how much pedagogical concept um, is important above all when we talk about education because we have to remember technology as she also mentioned it's a tool so we don't uh, we have to remember that the tool 
should be uh, uh, umbrellaed by something more important, that's the pedagogy. And let me read a quotation that my friend just put on the Facebook, and he quoted some, uh, some, some, some experts here. So three people at least, uh, Becker, Zhao and Frank, Zhao et al, who said, successful implementation of technology innovation into the classroom is more likely to take place when teachers are highly reflective about their own teaching and practice and goals. In the sense that they consciously use technology in a manner consistent with their pedagogy belief. And that's what I'm going to talk about because I'm going to talk about literacy. And literacy that I'm talking about here is how literacy is incorporated to English lesson. And it's not about literature per se, because today, I mean, in this session, I think I don't face literature teacher, but English teacher, English lecturer. So I focus on how English is integrated with literacy in order that we can have students who improve their level of English, but at the same time, they also develop their literacy. Agree with that? Yes. Sure? Yes. Good.